Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hudson McCarthy. Today's video, as the title suggests, it's about staying creative while dealing with brain fog or fatigue. Now, if you're a regular in these parts, you might be asking, what am I doing back in my old place? Truth is, I actually filmed this video back in October of 2019, so the past October, and the footage that you're going to watch today, I believe was my second or third attempt at this video. Though I still stand by everything I mentioned throughout this video, I'm... <sighs> At the time, I wasn't very proud of the delivery. Since I started filming on YouTube, all the way up until pretty much February, March, I was in a really, really bad health place. And October was kind of the worst of it. For those of you who don't know, I have slash am healing currently from uh, SIBO and adrenal fatigue. And my side effects, amongst many, many things, included brain fog, memory loss, and fatigue. Which was one of the reasons why I made this video, because I was having a really hard time staying creative under that pressure, and I scoured the internet for some sort of YouTube video or, or blog post to help me through it and continue doing what I loved. And as far as I'm aware, I couldn't find anything at the time. Keep in mind, I did have fatigue and memory, short-term memory loss and brain fog. So I decided to make one myself and help past me. In no way am I qualified to give any form of health advice. So none of these tips I personally believe are health advice. It's just I compiled a list of things that I found helped me during really, really bad spells, and I was hoping that I could start a conversation with these tips, and maybe you guys would have some as well, but due to the reason why I was filming it, it made it really hard to film it. Through each filming process, I kept forgetting what I was saying, I would zone out, I would just slowly start hunching more and more and more, because the fatigue was setting in, and I, I could barely sit up slash stay awake. And with all this, there was, um, a lot of hiccups when I was filming. What step am I on? Okay. Wait, what is step number six? What is tip number six? What is happening? Honestly, I thought I had deleted all this footage, but the other day I was going through my hard drive and I found, I found it and I watched it over and I was like, you know, it, it wasn't that bad. The points I made were valid and I think also showing it in the mental state I was in is more important than like a healthy me like saying, hey, do this guys. And then you as a viewer who might be going through something similar currently might question the validity of my experience. But the second reason why I'm also now publishing this video is due to the current state of the world. I don't think this video is just for chronically ill people anymore, or hungover people, or um, exhausted people, because those are the other type of people I mentioned throughout this video. I also think it's for everyone else. Now that I am in this healthier state, when I was watching it back, I just thought, oh, these are such good tips for me now. I am definitely feeling the stress of what's happening in this world, and it's definitely affecting my creativity, and yeah, so just bear with me throughout the video. This was my second month on YouTube. I was very, very nervous. I stumble over my words. I don't even use the words I generally go for. When I'm nervous, I feel like my vocabulary just like shrinks to likes, ums, buts, ums, sos. I am working on saying like, I'm sorry, I'm from Southern California. It is, it's part of our dialect. <laughs> but without further ado, why don't we let past Hudson take over from here. Some of these tips might be those type of tips where you're just like, this is all common sense. Why are you making a video about this? Because when you're going through something like brain fog or memory loss or fatigue, it doesn't matter how simple a tip is, you're not gonna remember it. So without much further ado, thought, I thought I had more of an armrest back there. 
So without much further ado, let's get into the tips. Tip number one, try writing at different times of day. So before I got sick, I was a morning writer and I just found it impossible to wake up in the morning because of the chronic fatigue and my melatonin and my serotonin being completely reversed. It's been a nightmare. <laughs> but because of this, morning time is not my golden hour anymore for writing. Just like if you're hungover the next day, it's not a good time either. <laughs> I did this experiment where I would spend every hour of a different day writing and then I would log that word count to see what time of day I got the most words. For me personally, what I discovered, it was 10 p.m. through 11 p.m., which is crazy because that is past my bedtime and I don't know why my creativity is spiking at that hour, but it helped. And so during those really, really bad months, I only wrote from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. and some creativity started flowing. With that, we lead into step number two, try writing in different places. For me, there's always a creative hotspot in my home, regardless of where I live. It's different in every place. And that creative hotspot, if I'm just sat there, it's a lot easier to get my story out. That might be a lot of hogwash, but um, it's, it's what works for me. So try writing at a desk, try writing outside, try writing on your couch, try writing in your bedroom, your kitchen, your bathroom. I don't know. For me personally, a lot of my chronic illness is caused by stress and the most comforting place for me right now is my bed. Tip number three, switch up your writing gear. For me personally, I am a laptop writer. I use Microsoft Word. It's the easiest one for me, but I find that when I'm really, really struggling, I like to take out a notebook and a pen and yeah, yeah, you're, you see that happen all the time, don't you? Um, I take out a notebook and a pen and I switch up even my location and time a bit and I just start to write. I write whether it's bullet points of a scene, 50 words of a scene, maybe just a paragraph. And then once I finish, have written all I can possibly write, I bring that notebook to my laptop and immediately write it back up. And normally when I'm typing it up, I notice I'm like editing as I go and the more words are added and the next thing I know, those creative wheels are turning and I'm back on track. I think I'm on tip number four. I hope I'm on tip number four. Go for a walk. Okay, really quick, just gonna jump in here. Um, this particular tip might not work anymore due to where you are. I'm still gonna keep it in the video because hope is that lockdown won't last forever. But if you are in an area where you're not allowed to leave your house, because some countries are different, some countries only allow one walk a day rules, some, like, everyone has, has a different system going right now, which is very confusing when you're looking for advice. I would recommend opening up a window and just putting your face in front of it and just breathe in that fresh air. Also, just open up all your windows, let the air circulate. If you are someone who's lucky enough to have a balcony or a garden, then you go and sit out in it. Just just try to get fresh air in any way possible. And if you can't, I'm really, really sorry about this one tip. Just, just ignore it. The other ones should hopefully work for you. Whether it's 10 minutes or 45 minutes, it helps. Obviously, some schedules won't allow this to happen, so you know, take every tip with a grain of salt and relate it to your life where you can. But for me, what I like to do is I like to put on my walking shoes, put on some headphones, but have nothing playing. This way, when I'm walking through the town, no one comes up and says hello or starts a conversation because I live in a very, very friendly neighborhood. Also, that way lyrics aren't bogging down my imagination with someone else's. Now, sometimes I will break that rule to listen to the Pride and Prejudice 2005 movie soundtrack because one, it's incredible, and two, classical music is inspirational in a way. And I just keep walking until the idea comes to me or I figure out the thing that's been blocking my creative journey. I just find going for a walk, I can come up with any answer for my writing. Tip number five, ignite your senses. Now that means a lot of different things for different people. It can be putting on that nice cozy sweater 
paper that just gets you in the writing mood. It can be drinking that nice hot cup of tea, the same flavor every time. That way it, it lets your taste buds tell your brain it's writing time. Or maybe it's my two personal favorites, which is a certain smell and sound. I mentioned before, I like the Pride and Prejudice soundtrack. I also like to listen to Dungeons and Dragons playlists because they generally there's a hair in my contact. I personally like to listen to the Dungeons and Dragons playlist because they generally have really good ones on Spotify for different type of moods that you're writing about. And then also scents. Most people might light a candle, but due to my short-term memory loss, I am terrified of leaving a candle lit and leaving the house, so I stick to a diffuser. I personally like to diffuse rosemary because supposedly it helps with brain clarity. That could be a placebo effect, but when you're in this condition, you're gonna take anything you can get. Oh, I forgot to mention, I don't know how, well, short-term memory loss. My favorite music to listen to when I'm feeling sick like with the brain fog and everything, is 425 Hertz music. It is my go-to. I listen to the same one every time, and every time I hear it, I think, oh, it's time to write an adventure. I feel like there's another sense I'm forgetting. Smell, hearing, oh, sight. Duh. Oh gosh. I guess that could be setting yourself up in the same place, so every time you see the same view, you think it's time to write. I don't know, worth a shot. <laughs> Tip number six. This one is the newest one on my list of tips, but it's been super helpful, which is watch an author tube video. I'm gonna interject again. This tip works with any art. So if you are a visual artist, then look up painting or sketching or charcoal YouTube videos, or if you're an actor, look up monologues. Just, just find the section on YouTube that is doing what you want to be doing. Honestly, this has, I think, been one of the biggest game changers is that whenever I just don't feel like writing or my brain is too fogged up or I just, I can't think clearly, I put on one author tube video, particularly any one that is a writing vlog or a, I completed my first draft, I completed my novel, I completed this. And that generally, inspires me to be like, okay, I need to be writing, what am I doing? Because I'm so inspired and motivated by someone else, but the rule is cutting it off at one video and then try to write for, I don't know, give yourself an allotted amount of time. And if you're still not writing anything, then you can watch another, but make sure you're switching off on that time. Tip number seven. Now this is arguably the most important tip, as well as the hardest tip to actually do, but don't beat yourself up over not being able to write. Please remember, you're only human. Just living, just thinking. Well, it takes up a lot of energy. And now imagine living and thinking if you're chronically ill or hungover or exhausted or you're currently living through a pandemic. Oh gosh, that extra stress and stress takes up so much energy your body's probably depleted in this current moment. Even the healthiest of people experience some sort of fatigue during this time. So take a step back, take a breather, and let your body heal. Now, healing looks different for many different people. It could be taking a nap, it could be meditating, it could be reading a book, it could be doing another sort of art or hobby that you don't have the same pressure as you don't put the same sort of pressure on yourself as you would with your main art. For me personally, my art involves looking at a computer and I remember my eye doctor and my acupuncturist actually told me that your eyes, I believe it's 15% of your energy, that just by using your eyes, it uses 15% of your energy. So screens, oof, that's bad. So what I like to do is I just like to meditate or practice Reiki or just lie there looking at a wall and thinking, letting my eyes rest. In other words, just do something else. Try anything else. 
That way you don't start associating your art with the negative energy that you're pouring out because you're so upset that you're not getting the words out, you're not editing the perfect photo, the monologue isn't being delivered in that perfect dramatic tone. Just, just, just try something else for fun. If you take anything from this video, just remember this. What you are feeling is valid. It's human. It's If you take anything from this video, just remember this. What you're currently going through is valid. It's normal. It's human. This moment in time does not define you. You will get through this. So hang in there and just don't beat yourself up over it. All right, past Hudson, back to you. All right, and those are all the tips. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any more, please let me know down below. Or if you've tried any of these and they helped, or I don't know, you have some really good suggestions so we can all get out of this creative rut, please, please add them below because every little bit counts. And who knows, maybe there is someone like me six months ago searching for this video, which is really the only main reason why I'm making this. But also know that if you have a different type of art, I feel like this can work for any art. I don't know. Mine's just creative writing, so I said creative writing. Either way, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye! I think this... I think this video is the one. I think it is. I think this is the last time I ever have to film it. Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs>